Hey everyone, Christian Loversich here and welcome to episode two of Pixel Feet Radio with my guest here, Phil Caprano. I still can't pronounce your last name. Good, say it. All right, Phil, come on, just say, say your last name. Caprano. Yeah, there you go. There you there go. He <laughs> does it better than I do. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're on the YouTube channel or if you're listening and, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or whatever, congratulations, you found us. And, uh, Today's going to be a quick show. It's it's we're still trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out the voice where I want to go with the channel and all that stuff. Well, the YouTube channel I know, but more to the podcast side of things. So I figure it's uh, it's January. So we'll do a, a little recap of 2019. Uh, you know everything that happened in digital media, especially Facebook ads, because everyone wants to know Facebook ads. Like I was looking at the channel, the YouTube channel, and the most watched videos. It's always Facebook ads. And when I started the channel, you know this, when I started the channel, I was like, it's gonna be just Facebook ads because everybody tells you, you gotta niche down, you gotta niche down and that's just basics. And the more I did it, I was like, well, you know, I was looking at where Facebook is going, where, where AI is going, where digital media is going. It's not gonna be about little tweaks and, you know, uh, manual bidding and, and the, all the little tweaks that you can play with with your ads and ad sets and all that stuff. AI is taking over, let's just face it. We just, I'm just so used to, to messing with the ads because when I started, when we started it, it was all manual, right? And still to this day, it's hard for me to let go sometimes. Like I still find myself wanting to do tweaks and then, it, you know, I get locked out of an account or something. Next thing you know, the AI takes over and I'm seeing amazing results. But then again, there's the other side where it just goes to hell. So let's touch on a little bit about that. Uh, Phil, you want to talk about a little bit about your background so for people that don't know who you are? Actually, Phil's one of my mentors when I started years and years and years ago. He started teaching me a lot of the stuff that... I know today, so if you found me, you can thank Phil for that. So go ahead, Phil, take it away. It's why I got the gray beard, Gary. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, been doing uh, digital marketing, started around 2003, 2004. Uh, back then, I had my own internet radio, and we got like 200,000 unique visitors per month, uh, which was crazy amazing for that time. Um, and ran down until about 2007, you know, with some extension there, well, just until Facebook came and grabbed over 50% of our listeners because people were not spending time anymore, you know, on going into website, jumping here and there, or spending time of your, on your website. They were just starting going on Facebook, playing at Farmville, and spending all their time yeah. there. You know, it was really... This is really what happened, and basically, not only to us, but to a bunch of other uh, people that were that had a huge website at that time. Um, then started my own agency, performance agency, two thousand eight. Started, you know, selling leads mainly online to mortgage company, cars company, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. You know, everyone that wanted leads, we were doing that back then, and mostly we were using Google because, you know, Facebook at that time it was only display ads display like what you see on other sites so facebook didn't have any of what you got now and the only way to get into facebook was if you knew that um that kind of agency that was reselling space on these uh websites so there was no network even like gdn was not i think that it was not even existing at that point which was really in the early stage so i've seen that until 2012, 2013, when I got very interested into selling goods online, uh, I had like experience back, you know, early uh, 2000, uh, even a bit earlier in 1999, sell a bunch of stuff on eBay, but you know, it was not, it was just for fun. You got probably almost anybody, you know, I didn't, you know, got uh, into it. I didn't understand it at that time, but really started mm -hmm. understanding around that time where I was selling t-shirts online, tested on Zazzle until I found, you know, about Teespring and Teespring was a game changer and just got it because I was, I mean, by luck, totally by luck. I was on the warrior forum searching for SEO stuff. And I got like this guy called Bruce Wedding that was teaching about how you can sell t-shirts with names. And that's where I really got in. And this is where I really got my first bunch of, big dollars because 
I was, I mean, I was just, you know, uh, asking around selling stuff here and there on different platforms, trying, understanding, having fun, you know, things like that. And when I started really getting my first dollar on Teespring, I understand fast that, okay, I can really do money with that. And I quickly moved to Shopify back then in 2015 uh, because uh, the biggest issue that we had at that time, and since I was heavy into digital marketing and I knew the power of uh, having a list, it was like Teespring couldn't share the names of the, the, the customers or the emails and all this kind of thing. So I said, you know what, I'm going to move into, first of all, I'm going to see, is there any suppliers that can do print on demand? And at that time I found Printful and it was probably the first one on the platform. And I think there was another one, but very, very, yeah. uh, no, not even T-Launch. They were no. even there. There was like, I think it was T-shirt gang or something like that, or T-gang, something like almost like a old school uh, underground thing. Um, and uh, I moved that starting selling onesies for babies then jump into selling stuff that I was selling on Teespring. So I started bringing after my own catalog that I was selling on Teespring, doing that on, um, on Shopify. Then later uh, in the same year, I think in April, I started digging into AliExpress stuff, you know, like uh, drop shipping, arbitrage, and all this kind of thing. And um, at that time, I was working at the big company also that um, that needed my help because they were in the event corporation, like the biggest competitor here of Live Nation, basically. So I was the the uh, the head of strategies there, and um, so I mean I was testing even stuff that I was learning from Facebook there to grab much more attention for the artists that we're bringing and all this kind of thing. And it worked very well in the, in the world. But at a certain point, I started making so much money with T-shirts and drop shipping that... Uh, oh, I, days. <laughs> $5, get 2000 back. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the cost of uh, the CPI at that time was just crazy low and we couldn't understand that. Now we yeah. understand it, how low it is. It yeah. was... But back then we didn't understand. And even, you know, I remember scaling campaigns up to $20 on Teespring. And soon as I was making profit, like 500% profit, I was killing this campaign and, and just stopping them, just starting a new design and scaling it again, because I thought that I was, you know, I was doing less money. So, but today, I mean, the mindset of scaling oh, dude. is totally I mean... different. So. I can just imagine the, the amount of money I left on the table at that time is just insane. The other day, well, not the other day, this was a while back. <laughs> I, I actually looked at one of my one of my first ad accounts. I, I, I was going through my business, my original business manager, and I was just deleting stuff and cleaning it up. And I went into one of my my first account, my first ad account. And I'm looking at the campaigns. I'm like, why? Like, you know, all these campaigns that I killed. And I'm like... I could have scaled this so hard and it, I just didn't know any better. You know what I mean? I didn't know what I was doing. Exactly. That's basically what we were. I mean, what we were doing at that time, it was already good. But I mean, what we know now and understanding much more and playing with, you know, the Facebook app, the algorithm, understanding the behaviors behind and even behaviors on the platform and the users. I mean, it's, it's totally a, a different game, you know, but things have, I mean, things have evolved. Um, a lot i mean since 2015 and every six months there's something new and i remember even there i mean the first uh and i will not talk about the slap when when i i lost my accounts multiple times i think that at that time i was already i already lost my account two or three times and my you're not a marketer you're not a real marketer until you get banned from somewhere yeah i, I mean i went through it too i lost one business manager with 47 client accounts running that was a nightmare of its own. Like, I'm not even gonna get into that right now because you know the story because I, you were one of the first people like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I remember my wife, I'll never forget this. My wife, my wife, I, this is when we were still uh, in our in our small condo downtown and uh, she turned around and I'm sitting like in the door frame of my office and she said that I looked like a ghost. I was just pale. 
I mean, think about it. This is yeah. your livelihood, you know, and I, I, I'm never in a million and I'm not doing any black hat stuff. I stopped all that stuff years ago. It, I was playing by the rules, white hat trying to follow the rules and all of a sudden, boom, just banned. Yeah. And that, I mean, I almost had a heart attack. You know, I was like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I had to call all my clients. I was like, listen, you guys need to go in there and like cancel all credit cards. It, it was, an, I'm, let's not talk about, well, that's going to be part of our recap of 2019. I exactly. Mean, it didn't happen <laughs> to me. It happened November, 2018, mm -hmm. but that's when it started. I can tell you it started November, uh, December 26th. And why do I remember that? Yep. Because that's when I relaunched a fitness brand that I had because we were getting ready to gear up for January yep. and did the ads went from being perfect all the way up till Christmas. And you expect a downtrend on Christmas day after till the January 31st. But if you're in fitness, it's going to tick back up exactly. you know, in January. Yeah. And it was just, it was just issues from there. I remember exactly just started that day. Mm -hmm. And that's when let's talk a little bit about, you know, 2019. So, Roller coaster year, lots of uh, up and downs with Facebook, lots of up and downs. Uh, YouTube made a lot of changes as far as like the algorithm works, which I think they've been great. But let, let's be real here. Everybody wants to hear about Facebook because it was yeah. just a mess. Yeah, sure. So uh, top of your head, you know, what can, uh, there's so many. What do, you, what do you remember the most top of your head that you were like, what the, you know. I'm not going to say it because then I have to blur a bunch of stuff out. But. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, uh, the, the trend that we are seeing over and over and that has been uh, certainly uh, starting be beginning of 18. But like you said, I mean, in 2016, a lot of change. Things changed a lot in the platform. One, the, the, I mean, to, to recap much more uh, back then so people can understand is is where basically Facebook changed their pixel the initial pixel which was just the traditional old school pixel where you could track only if people did an action or not and right. they moved that um gradually from 2015 to officially 2016 to the um much more intelligent pixel where they grab all the data and they start understanding better who does what uh so much more behavioral data that is back then and Basically, from there, things started to change and change consistently. And that's what has been probably the most painful part for um, marketers because the updates are done at certain at certain point when they started it was do, do, it was I mean, they were doing the updates probably monthly or even like twice uh, a month maximum. But things have changed so fast that every week I remember like every Sunday there was a massive reset and you had to start from the beginning, redoing all your ads and all this kind of thing until it pick up. And then you get probably three or four day max of good sales Then everything was going to fall down again because things were resetting. And they worked a lot on that, I would say, you know, the past couple of years to make it much more seamlessly and to have uh, less issues. But the thing that um, happened basically is there's, um, there's numbers of, I mean, we, we, I think that at that time there was like 2 million advertiser. Now we're around like 8 million advertiser. So you can imagine the numbers of people spending ads online and the numbers of people using their platform and the number of tasks that their computer needs to do behind the scene to update the stuff and the algos and the, the behaviors and the data behind and all this kind of thing. So when there's a small glitch happening and you can probably remember that, but basically in 2018 and this year we, we, we saw that, but a very smaller level in 2018, there was a massive outage there on Facebook just before Black Friday and everything when shit i mean basically the only one that were going uh, that were able to sustain in terms of their sales was not only not only black friday but yeah. everybody thinks i'm joking when i say this in every single group every year my birthday is coming up the kiss of death september 21st the week of september 21st yeah. 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 everything's yeah. going to crash they yeah. always release something i don't know what it is yeah. but for the past 5 years if you're true, if true. you've been if you if you've been doing ads for this long, let's say the past five years, go look at your data and look at the at the week of September 21st. That's my birthday. Mm. It's just a massive crash. And then we had what you were talking about, Black Friday as well. 
Yeah. So basically, when there's something huge happening there, I mean, uh, it, it, what any kind of outage that is going, I mean, it, it's getting it's like a blackout, you know, happening in in their their stuff, and they need to reset the machine uh, to restart, to re, uh, you know, to 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 uh, rearrange everything that is going in the back end. Now, the thing is, this year the the, the outage compared to last year was um, was less longer, was shorter for sure. And now, because they learned from the past years, it seems that the algo uh, came back faster and within uh, less than a week, you were up and running uh, almost like, uh, like it is. But one thing I, I want to bring is like people that were in broad niches, almost with no targeting, were able to still continue to do very good because they didn't have to think about which niche or which interests or which demographic or any kind of stuff even they didn't need to rely on lookalike audiences to continue to advertise and that's one of the big, biggest issue right now because basically what's happening it's when you run mostly your business on lookalike audience you're tied with their algorithm you know there, there's no chance if they, you have an update that it's going to help you in a good way certainly when there's an outage or a massive update coming in you will need to recreate all your uh, custom audience and generate again your lookalike audience the things that i see all the time um a uh, couple things so one every time we get a new client or you know that they left you know some agency or whatever or consultant you know once i hear well we had these people doing it for us but you know the ad start attack that's red flag number one I was like, okay, I don't know who these people are. You know, some of them I don't know. And I'm like, I can't just list, you know, take the, the word that they suck, right? Because I know what happens in the on the on behind the scenes, right? So one thing that people have to understand, and if you're watching this and if you advertise years ago and all of a sudden you're trying again or for whatever reason you left and came back, is what you were touching on supply and demand. All yeah. right. Yeah. Everybody has been jumping in the bandwagon every year at ad costs go up. So mm. people still have this thing in their head for some reason that Facebook ads should be just as cheap as they were in 2000, I don't know, 15. Mm. That's not the case. No. The supply has sta stayed the same because we all grow up and kids are not jumping on the platform, you know, unless they acquire something else. And, uh, you know, the demand keeps getting higher and higher. So what does that bring? You, your product quality has to be higher. Your average order value has to be much higher to make up for those cost, costs. Uh, so people can get through their head that through their head. Another shift that I that I saw happening right before my eyes is what you brought up about open uh, targeting. You know, I started noticing they started getting rid of uh, a lot of the interest targeting, and it was more broad. And you know, if you pay attention to your feed like I do, and I'm sure Phil does the same, when you're scrolling through your videos and you'll see a video that says animals, and it's just like a little paw print. You know, that when I see that, I'm like, okay, I know what they're doing. They're just piling everything that's animal related into one category. And that's how the AI is looking at it because it's, it's you know, the AI watches the video, recognize what's inside the video, plus the audio is transcribed. So all that information goes together and it just knows. And that's when I started noticing, uh, you know, campaigns with open targeting or just one single interest, you know, like fitness and boom, you will just get results. Now, you know, the cost per purchase, depending on the time, not as low as you wanted it to be so and that's when i had to have the other conversation you know because i, I deal with a, i deal with a, a lot of our small businesses still because it's just part of me i love like when i blow them up you know and then once you blow them up they stay with you for, oh, yeah, for, sure. for nothing you know some of them are nightmares some of them are not but that's the beauty of working for myself i can just fire the ones that are nightmare. but the ones that i that i, I nurture and, and 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 you know and and pay for my consulting i'm like listen we got to bring an average order value up of 100 bucks or higher somehow and then that's when you build your cross sales, your back end email sequences. And it's not anymore about your cold conversions. It's about that nurturing, that customer journey from top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, a purchase happens. And then that nurturing on the back end with email sequences, content, and the whole nine yards. It's I think I think the shift, you know, before it was just that 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 we were going for that that conversion, which I still do, obviously, but I think creatives are gonna be. They're going to play a big part coming into 2020. They already were in 2019. Uh, it's kind of making it a pain in the ass for us because now you got to create different media for different placements if you want to do it right. If you want to be lazy, 
you can just do 1080 by 1080 and then square and they'll show up everywhere. But if you really want to step up your game, you really got to format your media for stories, for, you know, on his network and all that good stuff. So, And even I would say, I mean, now it's much more important to design uh, creatives based on the client's journey uh, on your ad because they will not relate the same way as for for traffic at the first place or the first touch, you know, when they see you. And then after that, on the retargeting part, um, even uh, even there, I mean, you need to be much more creative in the kind of in, in the way, basically, you approach your, your clients. And one of the biggest issue, basically, I mean, the reason for that is not because it's evolving or it's getting much more complicated, but it's because customer behaviors on Facebook platform has evolved by itself. And we can see that when a client purchase directly from your store and the kind of experience they have, you know, um, during Christmas, I mean, I was selling um, ugly sweatshirts and I do that like every every Christmas. I start, you know, end of September and I run that until mid-December. Sure. And that's it. That's how I close the store after. I you know? always forget about that. Man. <laughs> every year I'm like, how did I forget again? <laughs> I should put it like a, a reminder on my calendar to build a funnel and throw some ugly sweats because they're such a great money maker. But for some reason, man, I'm so... You know what it is? I'm so busy with like my real brands and, and clients that it just doesn't, but it like the entrepreneur inside of me is like, you should have launched a funnel, man. Like, because they make money, you know? But and you, I you, always forget. You cannot spread to 10 at the same time. You cannot be yeah. all over the place. You have no, to you can, at but... a certain point. But I mean, also to, to say that I did that. And while I was promoting what I was, I mean, my t shirt, I have like some exclusive designs and all this kind of thing. I got like people reaching out on my support channel, uh, asking me about uh, refunds, returns, exchanges, or broken items of stuff that I was not even selling. Not at all. People thought because they were seeing an ad and uh, you were the only guy on the feed that was selling online that you were selling for Facebook almost because some people think that when they buy from Facebook, I mean, they buy from Facebook, they're not buying from you. Right. So are you, so that brings me to feedback score. I got nailed with the feedback score just because I had a product that <laughs> the short version, my supplier said that we had plenty. So I scale, I did $15,000 in sales in four days and then the product they didn't have enough. So that turned into a nightmare. Long story short, I had to send all these emails, nurture the clients, give them, you know, option. Do you want a refund or you want to wait? Whatever, it's up to you. I don't care. I just want you happy. And sure enough, even though that I had the survey to go out eight weeks later, it went out like the week after and everybody said, I never got my product, even though they did. I went to review. That brings me to another thing. Support 2019, horrible, still horrible, still useless. I mean, I had reps that I didn't even, I just ignore because they're useless. Um, they don't have access to anything. It's like they hire a third party company and these people have no access to, they don't even, they don't know anything. They don't know how anything works. It's, it's pretty bad. Uh, and, you know, I had to stop that store with that account because I couldn't, I, I sent all the paperwork needed to say, hey, everybody got their stuff. There was a, an issue here. Never, the appeal never went through, never got reviewed. I, can, I tried to submit it again and it, and it won't even upload. It's just a mess. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what happened to you. It's like people were, clicking, giving you bad feedback and then even buy from you? Is that what happened? Uh, I, I mean, uh, I got that as well. I mean, I got that for different issues, basically um, the time of sending stuff. So, I mean, last year it was much more awful because we had huge volume in sales. This year I was doing like as a side also much more than a main business. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted like just to keep up and, you know, I have the feeling of what's going on with this and if it's still trending. So it went super well, but what I felt was a bit like the, the same thing is like people now know much more about, I mean, th there's like two, two types of clients. There's the clients that still thinks that they buy from AliExpress and there's still the, the, the clients that are a bit on the fence because they got already scammed. They got, they're not sure if they, 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 they they're going to move forward or they're going to get their products or anything like that. So, and that, I mean, the, the, the thing that you, you just brought, the, the, the relevant score now on, I mean, the, 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 not the relevant score, but the, the, the yeah. page score uh, is, is a big thing now for Facebook. This is because this is a way that they can easily take out 
a bad advertiser for them or bad business for them but there is a way to go around you know and uh and a lot of uh smart guy i would say do that all over and over so what they do is they create multiple pages multiple ad account multiple store they just duplicate the stores and they run over they get a, a store shut down no problem they get another store ready to run and it's you know it's the endless way. well with me with me my goal was to build a brand of what i was yeah. doing i was just testing it yeah. right and I still have it. I mean, I'm, I'm still gonna build it. I'm just, you know, getting everything in hand before I relaunch again. And I don't care if my ad costs are up because I can make it back. I'm not worried about it. And, and anyway, your, your, feedback, your feedback score is gonna get erased in six months. Basically, if you start back in six months for now and uh, you're using exactly the same kind of assets that you were having, you shouldn't have any issue back restarting. You know, it's gonna take a bit of time to warm up th stuff, but basically what facebook doesn't like is a bunch of people that goes on their platform and start you know rating in as you know or reporting it or putting it as spam or whatsoever you know listen I, I'll, i'm all about client experience and quality for the user and for everybody else you know i've been in business for a long long time and you know it's always about the customer experience and i treat my customers like i want to be treated when i buy something i want quality i don't want some yeah. crappy product and that takes forever to receive and the beauty of it, you know, that some people can just start, you know, with, with drop shipping or whatever it is just to test and then move from there. But like you said, there's the bad guys that they don't care and they're just for the scam. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but if Facebook is going to put that in place to get rid of the scammers, I think, uh, you know, they got to take that feedback and take care of the real people that are trying to do it right. And that's what sucks because it affects everybody. So exactly. So, I mean, that's one of the things that we've seen probably in 2019 if we want to recap a part of it <laughs> yeah. customer experience is much more important than it was in a bunch of different way uh for facebook facebook ads so they, they are monitoring what you're doing with your site and what you are um in terms of customer experience and they want to make sure that you're offering the best because they want to keep their people because what's happening i mean is basically there's less people now getting on the platform and we can see always like especially like from the youngest part that they're going on other platform and now the biggest trend that we're seeing something that was not happening before is the older part older age people like us are now starting to move on instagram you know so it's why you can see now all this articles relating that instagram is going to be the next big thing for e-commerce in 2020 and more because all the people that have money which are like 35 and up you know that spans uh and they have disposal income are now going on instagram so we can see um facebook getting less people that are um that are spending money there you know or yeah. spending time on the platform so they will not see your ads as much you know the opportunity there will be less and there's thing also that is interesting with instagram is the feed the way it works is not it's it's really taught differently than um than on facebook where you really need to comment to like and to do something which on instagram you really don't need to do that. And when people, you know, were uh, scared about, you know, oh, they're going to remove the like part or, you know, it's just about, you know, uh, the influencers way of getting, you know, much more visibility or say, you know, they're big. I mean, it's not what it what people cares about. It's about the quality of content that you share. And in the back end, Facebook will know if they need to put you up in the feed or lower in the feed. It's a bit like on YouTube, you know, with YouTube, I think they understood that very fast in the way that they, they manage the content on your on the, on the feed, what they propose also to, to, to consumer and all this kind of thing. We're going to see that much more there. Uh, sorry, we're going to see that much more there <laughs> for, uh, for clients, uh, for, for consumer uh on instagram and um and another thing also i started to see it's consistent results on ads spent and dollars return on instagram for a long time it was up and down couldn't work didn't work was ah, yeah there's a sale there there's no sales and now you can really build 
a campaign that is sustainable and almost predictable in the way you scale it on Instagram compared to before. So yes, I think there's something going on there, but you know, globally, if we want to take a step back, is it's always the same. It's always the same mindset you have to 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 to, to have re related on your ads. You know, it's different type of channels that needs to be treated differently because they have different behaviors and you need to adapt. So when we're talking about creatives, same thing there. You know, creatives on Instagram doesn't have the same impact if you're using the same from Facebook. You need to have something totally different, much more lifestyle relatable because this is what people consume on Instagram compared on Facebook. You know, so. Yeah. It's and probably on Snapchat also, you know, I haven't dig enough on Snapchat, but Snapchat has his own way, TikTok has his own way, you know, they have all their way of working and you cannot just do copy paste and tr and, and think you're going to get the same result. Pinterest is the same thing. You know, Pinterest has his own way of doing ads that works. If you try to do it exactly like Facebook, you're going to fail. Totally, yeah, absolutely. Totally, totally, you know, so it's it's all this kind of thing that are um that marketers needs to adapt now uh and especially there's so much more opportunities you know um even in facebook but in other many other channel pinterest instagram snapchat TikTok, all this the, this new commerce there there's a lot of opportunities but you need to adapt you know basically okay so we got that i know we're pressed for time so i really want to touch on this because this was a big part of 2019 cbo yeah cbo was supposed to be rolled out september yeah, didn't happen. Yeah, uh, it's supposed to be rolled out February, I believe now, 2020. And uh, that's what caused a lot of the nightmares in 2019. Um, mm. I got to say, across all the accounts that I handle, including my own, CBO for me was hit or miss. Mm. Uh, there was one account where I would let it go without rules. It's just enough money, automatic, lowest cost. Just let it go, see what happens. And sure enough, man, it was on fire. Like I even had open ad sets, no targeting, and it was just crushing. And then I would do the same thing on another account with proven products that I know convert and nothing. Mm -hmm. Then I had other accounts where I had to set up, I had to micromanage, you know, uh, CPAs above this, shut off the ad set, turn them back on at midnight. And it just became a micromanagement nightmare, uh, you know, which uh, talking about like uh, AI getting really well, one of the hardest things for me to let go was placements. Uh, once I started learning that placements automatic is just, doing it and like it's supposed to that was the greatest one of the greatest things ever so start doing auto placement because it works really well but cbo do you think uh i still don't see it stable so i don't do you think it would be i mean it it used to be much more stable last year than this year for some reason that is very hard to explain especially that we're getting near the official date where it should be only cbo which i doubt it will happen and the reason why is the Hold on. For those of you that don't know, CBO stands for cap campaign budget optimization, which, yeah. you know, you set up your budget at the campaign level, you load up your ad sets and Facebook distributes the money uh, where it thinks it will get the best results. Go ahead. Sorry. There's just a lot of people. I mean, watching this right explanation, totally that. <laughs> so, so basically um, in my setup and my recent test, uh, I start scaling only with ad set level. The reason why is it's much more stable, proven way also of testing products and uh, much more granularity to find out, you know, what's going to uh, happen. Once you get that nailed up and you are able to scale at the ad set level, which means that you increase your bridges significantly to make it consistent and you know it's duplicable and it's it's going to grow then after you move on campaign optimization now the problem with campaign optimization is it spreads a bit think about that like the ad set spreading let's say you put multiple creatives into your ad set it's going to spread the budget all around even if you can lock this budget at a minimum it's going to try or think oh this one should work and even we test that with duplicates of creatives, you know, and we see it's not consistent even there, which means that this type of logic algorithm, it seems that they brought it also in the same way it works at the creative, but at the ad set, which brings a lot of fluff, let's say, yeah. and you can think you have something that is great. And basically this thing will not be great because it's the ad set lower down and it's working. So the way I manage it now to make sure I get a clean view of that is my CBO 
and I was do doing that already last year, it's just at a different level, is I take, uh, once I test it and I know like, let's say my interest or demographic or what, whatever is my targeting is nailed down, I bring that in my CBO, duplicate three times the ad set inside and my CBO is set. So whatever the CBO is gonna go in, is gonna is gonna optimize for the best ad set. Now the good thing about that is when you put three times, let's say the same, the, the exact same audience, the exact same targeting in CBO, you don't have overlap. That is the power of the CBO because before or when you are only at the ad set level, you can have overlap if you duplicate three times the, the stuff. And that's one thing that Facebook doesn't like and will penalize you as well. But by doing that strategy at the CBO level, it will remove that possibility and it will help you scale. But only if you your, um, your creative and your ad set is proven. This is what I noticed with... Uh you know, with uh, ad set budgets and, and CBO. So I saw, I saw two different things. When it came to lead generation, uh, ad set uh, level, I forget, ABO, what does it stand for? Ad set budget yeah, optimization. Uh, yeah. ad, set, ad set budget optimization. When, uh, I will do it for lead generation. And then if I did it, if I did CBO for lead generation, my lead cost will be twenty between 25% to 75% higher. So for some reason, lead gen, take advantage of ad set budget optimization for as long as you can. Uh, now with products, I saw the other way around. With e-commerce products, I saw CBO doing better than regular ad sets. Or I would see, another thing that I would see, I think it was around, I wanna say September, October, that ad set budget optimization that will, that will do well for a span of seven days, three to seven days, and then we'll just die. Yeah. But, uh, and then I would grab those winners, right? The interest, the winners, and I will make their own CBO campaign with the adequate budget. And then they will pick right back up and they will go forever. So that's what I saw in-, in, in, in I mean, uh, the, the rule of thumb here and whatever you're using CBO or ad set, first of all, you need to measure what your, 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 your results. And based on that, you need to be fast at duplicating. The thing that you don't want to do is over duplicating what works and you need to let it run for at least three days. You need a, a window of 72 hours, especially um, I, I, uh, winners can be killed fast, but the, the one that is starting to give, even if the, the ROAS, the return on ad spend is not great, but you're still making um, sales, it means that there's something happening there. It just needs to be tweaked. And to do that, yes, you will duplicate and you will duplicate over three days after. Because like you say, campaigns, either it can be ABO or CBO, they will die at certain time for no reason at all. You cannot find out why, but they will die for somehow something going on. And you know, and you know, there's no reason for it because if you're manually bidding, I have literally, I have three yeah. monitors. I have literally had a campaign, right? with Google Analytics on one screen, my ad set on one screen, the store on the other screen. And I can literally see when I crank up the budget and I crank up my bid on purpose as high as I can. And I can watch cold product that no one has seen, no one has heard of it, never even sold it. And as soon as I hit that bid as high because I know I'm gonna kick everybody out of the auction, that purchase comes in real time. That tells you how much information Facebook has, how much data they have that they can predict that you're gonna buy something on the spot without never even hearing about it. Yep. So uh, we, we gotta start wrapping this up. So predictions for 2020, quantum computing, AI, I think I think 2020 should be quote unquote, a good year. I mean, they did a lot of the, the, the they I'm, I'm assuming that they did a lot of the, they laid out the groundwork for the 2020 and they're still tweaking and they're still- yeah, I, th I think like what I can see since September for sure is um, cost stabilization in, in terms of uh, of ad spend, you know, on return as well. Uh, I, I, I was seeing the lowest CPA I never seen probably since 2015 uh, recently. Okay. Uh, I think there's something going on there where they capped the, 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 the cost in terms, even if there is newcomers or things like that. Um, because I think that they don't want to let people leave their platform right now because competition is getting much more aggressive 
they've seen a lot, a big wave of people going back to Google and invest massively into Google. So they want to make sure that they keep these advertisers happy by locking um, the, the 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 price of cost uh, the the price of cost. Uh, that's another thing. That's another thing that happened in 2019. At one point, we saw CPAs go like crazy. I didn't even know the percentage at this point. I remember one of my best selling products. I mean, the CPA was thirty dollars, and at one point, it went up to like hundred and seventy. Like yeah. it was insanity. Yeah. Now it's back down. You're gonna see spikes. You're gonna see spikes for sure because there are certain time of the day for different reasons. No, but this was a span of like a month okay. or two. Yeah, it was just insane. I mean, it was insanity. It was across multiple accounts, but that's the one that really stood out for me. And a lot of people were complaining about high CPAs. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends of, of a bunch of things. But, you know, if I compare Apples for Apples for the same product I was selling last year compared to this year at the same time of the year, I make much more money this year because of the lower cost of CPA compared to last year, even at the lower volume, you know, which yeah. means a lot because, I, first of all, I left a lot of money on the table not scaling, but I didn't have time to do it. Uh, that was not my main focus, like I said, but I could have seen continuing and pushing more. I would have still very happy with the kind of return I was getting and still able to stabilize it compared to last year where it was up and down. You know, it was like you were saying, things are crazy. I was literally, you know, paying to get customer much more instead of doing Prof, much more profit I did, but you know, not at the rate I was doing this year compared. And it's not about volume. You know, sometimes they say better you buy, it's going to be even if your margin. No, no, it's not only about that. It's about you know cost stabilization into a platform, and that's what I've seen. And not only for me, but also for other customers that I'm working with, you know, and other friends also. But like you say, sometimes for reason or not. It could be calibration of your account. It can be calibration of your page. It can be a bunch of different things that will have an impact, direct impact on your cost uh, for multiple reasons. So there's a couple of things that you can do if you see that. And the first thing I would say to do that is always, first of all, I have a backup page, Facebook page, where there's already you're already posting and engaging where you can switch very fast. Second thing, I have a backup account. Third thing, I have a backup account in another currency. Test other currency because you can be freaking surprised how much money you lose. I remember when you sent me a message, try Canada. I was like, yeah. what? It's like create an account and try Canada. I was like, I mean, sure it was no. huge. I mean, it was huge <laughs> difference because I used to run a lot of Canadian. I mean, right. all my ads back then were in, in Canadian dollars, and then I, I decided to switch to USD. Especially this year when we relaunched stuff. I mean, I said, you know what? I, I just want oh, don't overcomplicate my stuff. I'm getting paid in USD. I want to pay the ads in USD. I will do the the thing. Right. And I did that for a month. Then after that, I switched back to Canadian, and boom. I was making already more 30% more money in my pocket, but the return on ad spend was bigger even, you know? I was okay. like, what the heck is going on? Right. That's really, I mean, there's really some disparity there. And for a reason that, again, very hard to explain. So, I mean, go into Zimbabwe dollars, try to get your stuff <laughs> there. I mean, set up an ad account in Rupils or what you want. I mean, try this out because they're, really something going on in the account when you don't use the USD dollars for a reason, you know? That's funny. So, so I gave my prediction for 2020 AI, uh, quantum computing, it's going to make everything better. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they'll fix their support. I highly doubt it's going to ha happen anytime soon, but one can only hope. Yeah, they hired, uh, they hired like multiple thousands of people more. So what uh, what is your prediction for 2020 when it comes to Either Facebook ads and digital media in general. I, I, th I, th I think, I mean, the, 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 my, I mean, predictions are almost like over and over the same almost every year now that yeah, I get into it. But I mean, one thing that I said, you know, for sure, it's cost stabilization because of the competition, you know. Um, the other thing is they're going to be much more careful about the type of brands and people that are selling online. You know, if you're selling right now, uh, doing drop shipping or anything like that, I mean, it's a, it's a good business model, but make sure- To start, to start testing, it's a good business yeah, yeah, model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a cash flow business. You know, if you just want to get, it's not something that has huge value as an exit strategy, but it's something that can bring you in the game, learning the game, uh, make you 
good cash money for now, but long-term investment for sure, you need to build a brand. I mean, that's, that's for sure. But they will be very, very hard on that, especially for people that don't respect uh, delays of shipping and complaints and all this kind of thing. You know, we've seen like Ban Hammer, like, you know, strong this year. It's going to be stronger next year. I can guarantee that they want to clean the platform like crazy. Okay. So you want to make sure you have top A, A plus customer service and co customers um, experience on the site. That's another thing now they're going to check more is how your site is uh, fast, easy to, to check out. There's no much more pop up and things like that. Yeah, they talked about that like a year or two years ago, but now they're going efficiently. You know, one thing you have to learn in, uh, about Facebook and especially big companies when they make announcement is like they are giving you a chance to adapt because these kind of stuff are not happening now, but always happening within two or three years where they get very strict about what they're going to do. And Facebook so, has a target on their back from everyone, the government, the yeah, everyone's yeah, after. Yeah. Them. I mean, it, it, for obvious reasons. So they're trying to play the game as well as they can while they do their own thing, because let's face it, they're not the most honest company out there, but they are trying to clean up and try to keep up. And when they say, we're going to do this, they do it. And it's yeah. not perfect at first. So if you're, if you don't have your, your stuff in line, you're out, something's going to happen, you know? So. Exactly. So suppliers chain is very important. Logistics is very important. It's the base of your business, the core of your business. That's going to be uh, the number one thing. And I mean, um, globally, I mean, if we if we talk about e-commerce globally, I mean, um, it's very important for you this year to think about what you can do to increase frequency, you know, um, on your site. So how you can bring that customer one time, but buy again and again, you know, because it's not it, at a certain point, I mean, it's going to be like so crowded. It's going to be like so much competition, even if there's stabilization in the cost, but that's going to be like very for a certain time, you know, until they, they, they regulate their stuff. But what I can say is the name of the game is to be able to keep your customers over and over and over. So you can, the first time you pay for them, you don't have to repay for them, even if the cost is going to be much more. So think about that because this is going to be, uh, in the upcoming year. And even if you want to have a, an exit strategy for your business, it's where people are going to check, you know, and this is where you're going to have like real value there. So that's wow. basically, like I said, I mean, that's kind of prediction, but it's, it's also, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's global sense, you know, it's, it's global, uh, things that make sense for your business because it's what we've seen and what's going to happen is going to happen anyway with another platform. It's going to happen, you know, over and over. It's really like it's how it is working in this business. Yeah, for sure. So there you have it. The, that's our recap for 2019. What we think is going to happen in 2020. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. If you're listening to the podcast, thank you so much for listening. Make sure to check out the links below for uh, all, all my newsletter. If you want to sign up, I'm giving away a free course on how to build sales funnels because that's a big part of your strategy. And uh, Phil, what do you want to plug in? Where, where can people find you? Uh, they, What's going on? Tell uh, us. They, 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 they can find me on my uh, on my my new Facebook page, Phil Kiprianu. So Facebook slash Phil Kiprianu. I had to redo it because I was stuck. My page was, I mean, there was a bug in into Facebook and they couldn't fix that. So oh, that's right. not a good thing that is happening. But already there are Phil at Hubvi at Hubvi.com. This is my brand new uh, agency focus on e-commerce only. So we do only e-commerce there. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's, that's what's happening and that's where I am right now. <laughs> All right. So I'll post those links in the description. And, and again, if you're listening to the podcast on whatever it is, any of the all the podcast outlets out there, just make sure to subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like the video, like all that stuff. And thank you so much for everybody being with us. I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, talk to you guys later. Ciao guys. Thanks.